So today's theme is about guiding leaders into the future of sales and marketing. And in order to be guided into the future, we sort of need to ask ourselves, what is the future state of sales? And which are the most crucial components and which are the trends that we need to be aware of to really know how to navigate the future. Well, lucky for us today, as I mentioned, Mercury International Research has conducted a survey that has consulted into a report together with some of their partners like Sales Only, and it's named the Future State of Sales. And it's concluded 10 important trends to really have an eye on. And here to guide us through this report and talk about the future trends is the founder of Pro Sales Institute that today, of course, is Mercury International Research. He's also well known and appreciated as a researcher, as an author, as a trend spotter, and as a futurologist. And I'm sure many of you already know who he is because he's actually opened the sales conference since 2007. Uh, since 2007. So let's not break a good habit, right? Let's give it up a warm welcome up on stage to Henrik Larsson Broman. <laughs> <clears throat> Thank you very much, Sabine, for that introduction. For almost 20 years, we have been analyzing trends affecting the future of sales. And every year I present one or three or even five trends at the sales conference that we think are of importance. Today, I will do it differently. Today, I'm not going to tell you what trends we think are of importance. I'm not going to tell you about the latest trends or what trends we think are the most critical or most hottest trends right now, nor the trends that are most hyped right now. Today, I'm going to tell you what you think. Who are watching this are the most critical trends shaping the future of sales. And to do that, we at Mercury Research have been working on a global survey, the future state of sales, which aims to find out what business executives consider are the most critical trends shaping their future businesses. So this is how we did it. We started from the research we have been conducting for many years with more than 100 different business trends. And from those 100 trends, we picked around 30 that we considered are very important and relevant for the future of sales. And based on these trends, we sent out a survey to thousands of senior business ex executives, and we asked them the following question. Which of these trends would you say are the most critical for your business to stay competitive in the future? More than 1,000 CEOs, sales directors, marketing directors from more than 30 countries in the world answered our survey. And this gave us a list, a list of the 10 most critical trends shaping the future state of sales. Now, I'm going to pre present them to you briefly in descending order from number 10 until number 1 the most important trend of them all. So here we go, the 10 most critical trends shaping the future of sales. In place number 10, we find the trend, the return of thought leadership. And even though thought leadership is a trend that has been hyped for many years, the interest around the concept hasn't stopped growing. It keeps coming back. So what is thought leadership? Well, one way to put it is to say that thought leadership is when a leader's thoughts are being used by leaders to lead others. In other words, thought leaders build its competitiveness and profits on being known as an authority within a specific area. It can be an individual or a company, and what unifies them is that they create a unique position that changes people's perceptions and bringing trends and insights based on research and customer and guides the customer into the future. In our survey, more than half of the respondents, 55%, say being perceived as a thought leader is critical to 
and stay competitive in the future. And the largest driver behind this trend is that well-informed customers experience little or no difference between different products and suppliers. Therefore, one needs to build a brand that creates a feeling of authenticity, value, respect and trust, which manifests what thought leadership is about. Another driver is simply that senior executives are consuming more thought leadership. For example, nearly half of all senior executives say they are reading more thought leadership now than they did before the pandemic. But the most important driver here is that many surveys prove that thought leadership has a strong impact on sales performance. For example, according to a study by Edelman, producers of high-quality thought leadership have 57% more requests for proposals. They win 55% more businesses than producers of low-quality thought leadership. And they have 37% more easier to get to the next sales. And this increasing power of thought leadership makes it a top priority for most B2B executives. The next trend that is critical for the majority of respondents is sales and marketing alignment. And I know this is one of the most touted business phrases of the last decade. But for good reason. A strong relationship between sales and marketing is critical for any business's success. And even though many even though the awareness of this is high, this is still a challenge to more than half of the surveyed companies. In other words, for many companies, there's still much to do when it comes to aligning these two functions. And previous research that we have, con have conducted has, for example, shown that about 75% of all surveyed companies don't have a fully integrated revenue function. And this means that sales and marketing alignment is one of the largest opportunities for companies improving their business performance today. Especially considering that research shows that companies with strong sales and marketing alignment generate 32% more revenue. They have 90% higher brand awareness and 200% larger average deals than those with a weak alignment. So overall, we can say that tightly aligned sales and marketing teams is still a top priority for most B2B organizations, where they need to form a common vision for what they are about to achieve together. The next trend in place number eight on our list, we find a trend that I talked about a few years ago. And it is a trend that can help us stand out, increase productivity and attract high talented employees. And this trend I call the rise of happynomics. So what do I mean by happynomics? Well, what we have found in our research is that in recent years, more and more companies are trying to gain a competitive advantage by making happy employees a business strategy. It is no longer only employees that should find their own happiness. The leaders of the future must also create conditions for their employees to become happier at work. In our survey, this is true to 56% of the respondents. And therefore, more and more companies are also participating in measuring and creating conditions for their employees to be happier. For example, every year Comparably.com, among others, rates the companies with the happiest employees in America. So this year, which company do you think was appointed the best place to work for if you want to be happy at work. 
Sorry? It was Adobe. And this is, of course, excellent marketing. Who doesn't want to work for a company that have the happiest employees? But the main driver behind this trend is not marketing. For many companies, this has become a central business strategy that pays off from an economic perspective. A decade of research proves that happiness raises nearly every educational and business outcome. Raising sales by 37%, productivity by 43%, profit by 33%, innovation by 300%, and 125% less burnout. As well as a myriad of quality of life improvements. When people are happy, they work harder towards goals and seek to develop their capabilities. Which explains why this trend should be a central business strategy for every future business. In place number seven in our ranking of the most critical trends, we find a trend that we are all familiar with. The new social responsibility. And social responsibility means that businesses, in addition to maximizing shareholder value, should act in a manner that benefits society. It means being economically, socially, and environmentally accountable, which is no longer only a question for top management. In our survey, almost six in ten executives say that social responsibility, responsibility is critical to stay competitive in the future, which makes it clear that it must now also be part of the sales strategy as customers increasingly place higher demands on their suppliers to live up to their sustainability goals. But what is the most challenge, uh, what is the biggest challenge regarding this? Well, this is what the respondents in our survey say. The most important challenge is to find and be driven by a purpose beyond profit. And this is followed by work to protect the environment, protect the well-being of the employees, and to foster diversity, equity, and inclusion in the workplace. And these increasing demands have resulted in that more companies are moving CSR from being a separate initiative to becoming a fundamental part of their business model. Just like Mark Benioff, the founder of Salesforce, puts it when he says that the business of business is improving the state of the world. And this has also become very clear when viewing this chart here. It shows that more and more companies are adopting the so-called triple bottom line, meaning that financial reporting should not only value economic results, but also social and environmental ones. According to KPMG, 80% of all companies currently include data about the CSR initiatives in their annual reports, a number that has increased dramatically since the first survey in 1993. So this trend tells us clearly that the future state of sales will not only be about revenue, profit, or winning deals. It will be much more about finding a purpose beyond profit and contribute to a better world for everyone on this planet. So, what else have we, have we found in our research? Well, we have also found that there is an increasingly struggling battle for sales talent. Six in ten respondents say that finding, attracting and recruiting the right talent is critical for the future businesses. And this may seem obvious, but the fact is that this is an issue that has become increasingly more difficult over time. 
According to Manpower, 69% of the world's companies indicate that they have difficulty finding talent. An increase of 130% in a period of 10 years. And for most companies, this is a huge challenge. As people are and will be in the future, the primary source of competitive advantage. But what does it look like in sales and marketing? Is the challenge as big here? Well, our research shows that it's even bigger. In fact, as many as 87%, as we heard before, almost 9 in 10 companies say they have difficulty finding talent to the sales and marketing function. In other words, sales and marketing are indeed also participating in the battle for talent. And why is this? Why is this? Well, what are the three main difficulties when finding talent? Well, the biggest difficulty in our research is that candidates lack industry knowledge or experience. Secondly, lack of skilled labor in the market. And thirdly, lack of meeting expectations from younger talents. And this indicates a global talent shortage, meaning that managing this challenge will become an increasingly strategic question for management in the future. Another reason why it has become more difficult finding talent is because we are entering the new age of sales automation. So what do I mean by sales automation? Well, sales automation refers to the fact that the future of sales will be highly automated. Not necessarily that it will replace salespeople, but rather complement the sales team so they can focus less on admin and more on selling. With 60% of respondents claiming this is crucial, we can now confirm that this is a strong trend that will have a huge impact on the future state of sales. But why is this trend considered so important? Well, as long as we live in a hyper-competitive world, companies will always search for new smart ways to increase productivity. It is no surprise then that uh, the investment in sales technology is increasing. In fact, almost 8 in 10 sales pro professionals say that the sales organization plans to invest significantly more in sales technology. And they have a lot of tools to choose among. Just have a look at this graph here, showing the explosion of sales automation tools. Today we have more than 1,100 sales tech applications aimed at accelerating sales productivity. This is an increase of 500% in the last four years, showing that sales tech is on the rise and will continue to accelerate the coming years. And of course, it's not easy to navigate this landscape. But here there are endless of opportunities. Not least because research shows that the potential is huge. According to McKinsey, more than 30% of all sales-related activities in the entire sales value chain can now be automated. And this includes things like sales strategy, lead identification, configuration and pricing, order management, and post-sales activities. And the companies who understand this and unleashes this potential will belong to the winners of the future. But only, only if they adapt, if they succeed in adapting to the next trend in our survey. Because if you want to increase the usage of techno techno technology in sales, we also have to get ready for an era of sales skills trans transformation. 66% of respondents in our survey say that this trend is critical to succeed over the next three years. 
And this means that the majority of companies are facing major challenges when it comes to upskilling and reskilling their sales force in the future. Especially if we take into account that 90% of all executives report existing skills gap within their sales and marketing function. And another 85% expect the skills gap to get worse in the next three years. And this is, of course, a huge challenge. But what are the main reasons behind the skills gap? Well, our research says that there are three main reasons why the skills gap seems to be increasing. The first reason is more complex sales processes. More than 50% of the respondents indicates this is a challenge. This is a main reason. And this is followed by changing customer behaviors and digitalization of sales and marketing. Furthermore, the respondents estimate on average that almost one third, 28% of their sales force are currently lacking the right skills that they need to reach their goals in the next three years. And this is also why we can expect this trend to be of even higher importance in the future. Companies will be forced to invest in upskilling and reskilling in order to adapt to more complex and digital sales processes. All right, one of many trends that lies behind this increased skills gap is the next trend on our list. A trend that I also highlighted last year at the sales conference. And this trend is the increase of remote or hybrid selling. And we all know about this. Remote selling means that buyers and sellers interact in different physical locations without meeting each other. And this is a trend that has gone from being a complement to becoming the new norm. And it's now one of, the, one of the top three trends in our survey. 68% of respondents say that this trend is very important, giving us a clear sign that they believe that this shift is permanent. And this trend is mainly driven by the fact that B2B buyers have changed their expectations. We all have changed our expectations on this. According to McKinsey, more than 70% of all B2B buyers now say they prefer remote human interaction before in-person meetings, citing ease of scheduling and increased productivity as the main reasons. Another survey from LinkedIn shows that 50% of all B2B buyers believe remote work has made purchasing easier. But even though many buyers prefer remote human interaction, it doesn't say the change will be easy. In our survey, almost six in 10 executives claim that this has become more difficult for their sales teams to engage with customers since the shift to remote. But even though many feel that it has become more difficult Remote selling is more difficult. And this is important. Research shows that we can do business remotely. In fact, almost half, 48% of all salespeople, close deals to a value of half a million US dollar or more in the last year without ever meeting the buyer in person. So all these findings tells us one important thing. Remote selling or hybrid selling is here to stay. And salespeople cannot simply go back to the old way of doing things. The post-pandemic world will be a combination of offline and online. All right, so remote selling was the third most critical trend in our survey according to the executives. But which trend comes in place number two? Well, here we find the trend, the need for innovation acceleration. Sales is not only about how we sell. 
It is also about what we sell. As customers, as customers' needs are constantly changing, we also need to adapt and innovate new products and services. And this trend is critical to 75% of the respondents, which means, which proves that the majority of executives are worried that the products and services will be disrupted in the future. And there are several drivers behind this trend. One of them is the fact that companies are spending more and more and more on innovation and R&D. So just have a look at this graph here. It shows that of the 1,000 companies in the world that spend most money on innovation, the spending on R&D has almost doubled between 2005 and 2018 from about 400 to almost 800 billion US dollars per year. And this has also led to that the number of worldwide patent applications has increased with more than 200% in the last uh, 20 years, from about 1 million to over 3 million in 2019. And also, think of this. 90% Ninety percent of all scientists who have ever lived are alive today. Ninety percent. And this accelerating speed of innovation is causing a paradox. The more we create, the more we destroy. And the more we destroy, the more we need to innovate. Disruption is much bigger than in the past, which explains why this trend is considered so important. But why does this matter to all of us in sales? Why should we care we are in sales? Well, as long as sales becomes more customized. Innovation is no longer only an issue for the R&D lab or the boardroom. Sales must also innovate in collaboration with the customer and R&D. According to a recent study by Boston Consulting Group, almost a third of all surveyed companies claim that the lack of collaboration between sales and, and R&D is the biggest obstacle to higher innovation output. And this is a shame considering that sales is often only the only ones actually talking to the customers. In other words, sales teams of the future must to a greater extent be part of the innovation process. Doing this, they can increase the volume of business and help the company stay more competitive in the future. That was the trend innovation acceleration. Now, the final one, which is the most critical trend of them all, shaping the future state of sales. What is the biggest challenge that keeps almost every executive awake and at night? Well, the answer may not come as a surprise, as it is a trend that has been going on for a long time. Customer, value, orientation. The challenge of moving from a product-centric to a buyer-centric sales organization. In our survey, 85% of executives say that this trend is the most critical to stay competitive in the future. 85%. And that this is a trend can easily be proved by a simple search on Google Trends. It shows that we right now have reached all-time high. Never before have so many thought answered to the question, what is customer value? And why is this? Well, this can be explained by a movement that we have been following for many years, the changing logics of how customers buy. With the results from our survey, we can now state, once and for all, that the traditional way of selling are on the verge of extinction. In fact, today only 12% of the total average revenue comes from traditional product sales. 
And this is expected to continue to dec decrease to 10% in the next three years. Instead, instead, the revenue from complex value-based selling is increasing over time. And today, more than half of the revenue comes from this type of selling, which is expected to increase to over 60% in the next three years. This is a fundamental shift changing the nature of sales. But what does it mean and what do business executives consider are the most challenging drivers from moving from a product-centric to a buyer-centric sales organization? Well, according to the respondents in our survey, there are five critical drivers that need to be addressed in order to create customer value. The first critical driver is to create customer unique solutions. 49% of the respondents claim this is crucial. Secondly, bring new insights based on research and trends to the customer. Thirdly, gain a deeper understanding of the customer's industry. Fourthly, educate, inspire and challenge the customer to change. And finally, be proactive and anticipate customers' future problems. And these five drivers tell us clearly, tells us a lot about what most companies are struggling with, what they will prioritize and how they will try to adapt to this trend in order to become more customer value oriented. All right, ladies and gentlemen, this was my final trend for today, the most critical trend of them all. So here they are, the top 10 trends shaping the future state of sales according to you, according to business executives around the world. From thought leadership to customer value orientation. And if you want to learn more about these trends and get the full list of all the trends we have surveyed, you're welcome to download the full report on mercury.net slash the future state of sales. So with that being said, let the trend be your friend. And thank you very much for listening. I hope you will have a fantastic day. Thank you. Thank you so much, Henrik. A really deep dive and, you know, thorough survey of all the different trends. And maybe not that surprising looking in the era that we're yeah. in, but I found it really interesting that social responsibility was, you know, so much in the core and the ESGs and so forth. And also, also the consensus that a lot of leaders are looking, you know, for purpose beyond profits, as yeah. is the customers. I know that you also uh, mentioned a quote by uh, Mark um, Benioff, the founder of Salesforce, that the business of business is to improve the state of the world. Um, could you just elaborate a bit about that? Uh, well, uh, I think it's... I mean, Salesforce is a great example of a company that has, from the start, built its entire business model on, on a philanthropic idea. Mm. Uh, meaning that they leverage technology, insights, people, money and resources to improve communities all over the world. Mm. And, and the most interesting part of that is that um, they have combined that with amazing economic results. Mm. Uh, so I think that um, social responsibility and uh, and business go hand in hand. Mm. They're not the opposites, mm. uh, which many seem to believe. Mm. So Salesforce is a great example that I think we can use as a source of inspiration uh, for all of us who want to become better at, I mean, social responsibility and mm. make the world a better place. Mm. Which is very much the time that we're in, yeah. very much also maybe put sparked by the pandemic. So Henry, thank you so much. I'm going to give you, um, this is a gift card from Friends Arena that is about, you know, helping us um, have a world without bullying. So it's, it's been done in your name. Thank you very much. So thank you so much, Henry. Thank you. Thank you. 
so Henrik did a great segue to our next partner interview, which is going to be with Salesforce. And as Henrik mentioned, quoted to be one of the most innovative companies in the world with a strong agenda of social responsibility. Salesforce really believes that everyone is a trailblazer, and the company is also building the technology to really enable this. Every day, Salesforce is helping around 150,000 companies around the world to really increase employee activity, team collaboration, customer loyalty, and sales revenue through their CRM platform. So let's hear more about this, because here I already have Emily Garrison, account executive at Salesforce and lead for Salesforce Women's Networks. Please, some applause for Emily. <laughs> So great to have you with us. Thank you for having me. And uh, as you saw, trends and social responsibility was part of the 10 trends and something that Salesforce also drives a lot on their agenda. And sometimes, you know, we can hear a lot, but we also want to know how companies actually do this on a practical level. So I just wanted to sort of ask you, you know, tell us about Salesforce um, social responsibility strategy and also the one-to-one-to-one -to -one -to -one sort of philanthropy that you have. Yeah, so at Salesforce, we truly believe that businesses can be a platform for change. And since our founding 20 years ago, we've had what we call the 111 model as our phil philanthropic model. There we go. <laughs> and so this means that we put 1% of our equity, 1% of our product, meaning licenses, and 1% of our employees' times back into the community that we're a part of. Mm. So throughout the years, you know, we've done a lot with balancing financial revenues with social impact. Mm. So our founder, Mark Benioff, is often in the streets, mm. uh, you know, making sure that his voice is heard and that our voices are heard collectively when it comes to things that we, we believe are not uh, on par with our values mm. of uh, customer success, trust, innovation, and equality. Mm. I think values is such a key, you know, word today because that is sort of really in the circular economy, creating mm -hmm. value for for everyone. Um, I wanted to, I mean, from taking from a global to maybe a more local perspective, could you tell us or share with us some of the social responsibility activities that you actually have in Sweden or in the Nordics? Yeah. So as I said, one percent of our employees' times are put back into the communities, and more locally, this means that what, um, every single Salesforce employee is given up to seven days of VTO or volunteer mm -hmm. time off. So I have uh, customers and partners that are a part of these initiatives as well. But my, uh, some of my team members that I work with are uh, coaching you know, their sports teams for their children. Mm -hmm. Next week on Thursday, we're actually be uh, cleaning uh, Clara Schirke, which is an organization that we've worked with for many years, uh, and make sure that the church is clean and nice uh, before the Advent season. Mm. So there you have quite an easy incentive, looking at social responsibility, to really have this volunteering, not just for the customers, but also internally, so it becomes sort of part exactly. of the culture. Um, another key component is, um, in, in any sector, but of course also in sales, is sort of really getting more women into sales. And I know that you're you know, the lead for Salesforce Women's um, Network. So tell us a bit more about that, and also maybe what's the biggest challenge here? Yeah, so the Salesforce Women's Network is our employee resource group that we have specifically for women and their allies. And for the past five years, I've been one of the leads of this organization. And it's really making sure that we not only help support these women and their allies, but also help advance their careers. And so we have focused a lot on, you know, uh, making sure that people feel empowered to take the next step in their career. Mm. And we've worked a lot with women in tech, we've worked a lot with our partners there as well to make sure that we get more women in front of um, our communities. Mm. And sort of taking that a little further, we talk about remote working or working mm -hmm. from anywhere. So just briefly, how is that impacting, I mean, both the company, the employees, your customers, and also as we bring up women, you know, the, the sort of more women into the sales force? Yeah, so we're working a lot with um, 
some of our partners, and we're also working with our own e-learning platform. So we have something called Trailhead, which right now you can go in and learn everything you want to know about Salesforce. Mm -hmm. You can actually become admin certified. Uh, we have a partnership with Academic Work and one of our partners, Fluido, that gives you a 12-week boot camp where essentially you learn from you know, very minimal Salesforce foundation and can actually get certified at the end of those 12 weeks mm -hmm. so that you're able to market yourself as a Salesforce admin. Really good, because also the reskilling, mm -hmm. the relearning is also so vital in these times. Emily, thank you so much for sharing those insights.